how many people are living inside your head anyway? Do you have conversations that go something like this? Oh, look at that piece of chocolate cake. Girlfriend, you should not look at that piece of chocolate cake. You're going to eat it. If you eat it, you're going to have three. Have you looked at the size of your rear end lately? Do you think your clothes are going to fit if you eat that chocolate cake? But I wanted cookies, warm chocolate chip cookies. You don't need those cookies, girl. Walk away. Do you have conversations like that? Your heart, your mind, your spirit, your uh, conscience should all be combined and on the same team. You need to be on your own team. You need to be on your own team. If you're on the opposite team and you're having a war back and forth in your head, and there's more than one person trying to tell you what to do. One person leaning this way, another person leaning this way. It's just not going to work. You need to listen to your food cravings because they don't go away, generally speaking. You go six months without goodies. What happens at the end of the six months? We talked about what happens if you have a root beer float every morning for 31 mornings. On the 32nd morning, are you going to want a root beer float? What about hot fudge Sunday? You wake up in the morning and you want a hot fudge sundae and you run over to the drive up at 1031 in the morning and get a hot fudge sundae. If that continues on for 17, 20, 25, 29, 30 days on the 31st day, are you going to wake up and want a hot fudge sundae? I don't think so. Listening to your cravings will, sound, will save you grief, frustration, and just have the hot fudge sundae. Have the root beer float. Have the chocolate cake. Have the chocolate chip cookies. I had all of those things as I was dropping 88 pounds. Most of all, I had milk chocolate. But because I looked at the big picture, I knew that I could eat the chocolate every day. I could eat the chocolate chip cookies every day. I could have the potato salad when I wanted it. I could have all of those things in their own proper turn. And I wasn't counting calories and I wasn't counting servings. Yes, I paid some attention to nutrition. I tried to get enough protein in. I was not counting carbs, and uh, and it worked, and it worked over the long haul for several years now. It's a freedom that I think we all wish could be real, and in the videos to come, I'm going to try to explain to you the method that I used. It's sort of a, it's sort of a organized chaos. Can't think of a better term right this minute. I had another term earlier and hopefully pass tips and and uh, I'm going to get stuck for a word. Anyways, methods that might be helpful to you. It's the big picture. It's what you've eaten in the last year that has determined what you weigh today. So don't try to outsmart your food cravings because they're going to just come back to haunt you. And instead, if you don't have the piece of chocolate cake today that you want, down the line, you're going to say, everybody step aside because I'm going to have me some chocolate cake. And it'll be an ugly situation where you're going to eat 12 just because somebody told you you couldn't have it. So don't be your own worst enemy and try to be one person inside. Quit having wars. We'll talk about getting rid of the guilt later. That's a separate topic. And uh, in a video to come, we're going to talk about watching your language. You really need to watch your language, too. Talk to you soon. Push this little button and it'll quit here, right?